I think once the writing happens, then you start planning and you have to get very concrete with your life and you, you can, you, you, you have to stop being a daydreamer, but you know, when you're writing, you get to be a daydreamer. You get to lay around on the couch. You get to make your own rules and your own hours. And it's wonderful. Um, and this is what emerged. So much of that has to do with the fact that I had been working with Alana Heim and, and her sisters in the band Heim. And I was so inspired um, by our collaboration, um, which started about six or seven years ago, maybe more now. And I, I, I have a friend, Gary Getzman, who is a producer who works for Tom Hanks. And, and many, many years ago, before he was a producer, he was a child actor. And he would tell me stories of his youth as a child actor here in Los Angeles. And I always found them to be completely hilarious um, always stranger than fiction. They're always peculiar. And they always, um, they always tickled me because he grew up in the same part of the world that, that I grew up in here in the San Fernando Valley. So everything in his stories made sense to me. You see, I had, I, they were all, they were all very real places and real situations that I could relate to. So the combination of these things just seemed impossible to resist. I think that we all feel um, these, these balances of power in our relationship, even if we're not aware of it, even if we don't think about it too much, you know, um, particularly between men and women, you know, this is what, this is what we, we struggle with um, um, in a day-to-day -day relationship, month to month, year to year. And it's very easy to dramatize or it becomes very interesting dramatically to have situations like that. And more importantly, it, it lends itself to comedic possibilities, you see. So this is good, this is good ground for, um, for, it's fertile for a story. No, that had never occurred to me in writing this story. I always thought that I had, a, I always thought that I was making a film that had a very interesting premise. Um, that a that a 15 that a 15 year old an irritating 15 year old would ask a, a grown woman for for a date and that against all of her better judgment she would turn up for the date you know what does that say about her is an, is the most interesting question um of course he's it makes perfect sense that he would want want to try and get this beautiful young woman out on a date we all understand what that is what's what's more interesting is why in the world would she turn up um, what is she missing? What is she? What does she see in him? What is she not valuing in herself that would create a situation where she would um, that she would turn up? Once you do see her home life and you see what's going on with her, you realize that she's attracted to his his stability, his emotion. He's he's actually a, 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 he's actually quite emotionally mature, and she is not. She's the exact opposite. She's very unstable. Um, She's very um, impulsive, uh, and that's that. That's very interesting. Well, there must be because obviously it's the time of my childhood, but um, and so I keep revisiting it. Um, <clears throat> I feel, you know, but more to the point, uh, the the story of Boogie Nights. Um, I think could only have taken place at that time, you know, but pornography was really flourishing um, and making the transition from, from film to video cassette. That, that's an interesting um, detail that, that makes it important to set the film at that time. Um, of course, you, you, get, you get the byproduct of that, which is a sort of wonderful um, design and, 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 and music that we all um so interested in still you see um this film has specifics attached to it that i don't know that you you could you could do a waterbed uh storyline nowadays you know you can't do a story about pinball you there's a very interesting story with benny safty's character about his sexuality and how that was not able to be revealed um that's certainly we've come a very long way since since that time.
Well, I think that there's a little precious little hope right now. I think we all think the, the sky is falling and maybe it is um, literally the sky might be falling. Um, we have come a long way. It's good to remind ourselves where we are, but, you know, but I'm also one of those people that never likes to get too comfy. You know, you can be proud of what you've done, but only for one second and then you have to get back to work. So, yeah. It's amazing to think that there was a time within recent history when um, you could get fired for being gay, you know, if you're a school teacher, you know, that's like in our lifetime, my lifetime, at least. It's a mistake, I think, for a filmmaker to to um, pursue themes, you know, in his, it, this is a mistake, I think. I, I, I think themes have to emerge from a story that is uh, based in, in fact, uh, that has, uh, that is entertaining to an audience uh, and that hopefully has comedic and dramatic possibilities. The themes um, have to grow quite naturally from that. You know, I, I, it's sort of, I remember hearing about people that were songwriters that would think, oh, you know, I used to have to sit down and try and write a hit song, right? They wanted to write like a hit song. And they said that, oh, just they could never do it, right? And then if they were lucky enough to have a hit song, they just happened to be like sitting at breakfast one morning, buttering their toast, and something came into their mind and they, and they, and they wrote it. Um, I think this is a, it's a more a organic way to work.